Well, here we are at Dell World. Very exciting at the Austin Convention Center. And I have my coworker, as you may remember from the first episode of the Cote Industries podcast. So uh, we, were, we were talking about, uh, we had an identity summit recently. Sure. And so we've been talking in our spare time about the future of identity. Sure. And why don't you lay for us out like a, uh, a good blue sky and future of identity? Well, it's a tall order, but I will do my best. Here's a very simplistic reductionist approach to the whole identity problem, or no problem actually. If you think about the fact that all the apps are just going to be available on the cloud and no longer in the corporation, then what exactly is the function of corporate IT? Corporate IT simply reduces to managing the interaction of users in the corporation trying to go access a particular app, right? So it's about provisioning access to the application in the cloud or deprovisioning or managing the security or other things. That's all they're, they're trying to basically manage the interaction of the user, the end user, be it within the corporation or outside, to the app in the cloud. That's, that's all identity is reduced to. It's no longer this big bulk of data that you're holding and trying to manage so many objects within that. I think it's all going to just go away. Now, skeptics will say, well, what about data privacy, security, and a million other things? Logging and auditing? Auditing and all of that, right? Hey, I only care about the end user service. For me, do I really care about logging and auditing of... I don't even... I mean, this is just beyond my belief that people are still stuck in an, in an age where... Well, there's like regulations people have to yeah, comply with. Yeah, the regulation with. people, right? I'm not saying don't regulate it or don't, you know... Or don't comply. Don't, yeah, it's like, you know, things are ch evolving so fast, right? Applications are being deployed continuously and there's continuous development, continuous integration, continuous usage changes, all these things. So this whole notion about I am going to enforce these policies and you have to wait six months before I figure out what those policies are going to be. Part of the problem is that most people don't know what the policies are. They take two years, three years before they can enforce what kind of security level access authorization needs to be on every single object. By then, somebody else has developed another application and it's actually delivering business value. So the, the, the balance here is this. There's business value and then there's this huge penalty you pay for not delivering value. So, where do you want to go? This huge penalty in the, in the corporate IT part, or I would call this freedom IT, and this go deliver business value, everything else will come later. And so you just sort of like uh, latch on all that audit stuff that you need, or? I mean, you can audit the heck out of it. I don't know what you're going to do auditing, you know, my point is not about auditing, my point is about getting the audit policy right or wrong. So people can spend enormous amount of time just doing this policy and governance when real value is being missed. Ah, uh, right, right, right. They're sort of worrying about the plumbing instead of the faucets. Exactly. Right, right. So you're a faucet guy is what you're saying. Well, you can uh, call it whatever you want. My point is that go to value think about innovation, think about driving, you know, where end users are. Don't worry about this this dogmatic view about, you know, here's how I'm going to govern something. The ungovernable is where the future is. So, so do, you, do you think there's people who are kind of figuring that out? Like, are there good examples of identity, this kind of futuristic identity you're talking about? It's not futuristic, but that's sure. fun to say. Well, you know, if you look at, you know, a lot of vendors in the space now, um, there have been, you know, many of these before, but I think their adoption is getting slowly, I would say, um, more broad. Um, there are a number of small, you know, vendors who are trying to get corporations to move into that space by giving one console, or one uh, interface from where their users can go and um, get the same level of access to their right. space. There, there's an interesting thing you notice of, like whether it's like Okta or Horizon, like there's kind sure. of... It's, it's really easy to combine, to your point, of identity being a brokerage service for getting access to applications. That's it. It's, it's, it's easy to imagine that combining an app store, if you will, sure. and identity management makes, makes an interesting That's sense. That's perfect. If you think about it, yeah. Is, um, you know, if you think about iTunes, right, the app store, and, and I mean, where's the data, data privacy, governance, like can you go and buy, hey, I have 99 cents or a dollar or two dollars, I can go and freely go and buy an app and start using it. So if you're somebody who's running a business and you want to deliver value to your customers, would you be going into that model? 
or would you be thinking, no, no, I'm going to build my own app store, I'm going to do my own core. I mean, we had this great uh, speech today by Vivek Kundra, the former CIO uh, for the US government, and he was asking a very basic question, like, should companies be spending their time building non-core large IT infrastructure, or should you just let it, right. I don't care. And, and he was the cloud-first policy guy. Cloud-first policy. Yeah. So I think that's where we should all be focusing on in the App Store model. Yeah. All right. Well, you, you got any other, you got, a, you got a ribbon to put on top of that? Um, I would just say focus on innovation, focus on delivering value, forget about policy governance, all this other huge dogmatic ideas which don't really, I mean, Facebook can't think about it. Or and a lot of the people who are in the edge of, you know, the cloud <laughs> can't think about it. Only people who are stuck in the primitive data center models and mainframes and the, uh, you know, other... The traditional world. The traditional, yeah. Google doesn't have a mainframe, right? So That we know of. That we know of, sure. <laughs> right? Amazon, I don't know if they have a, a mainframe. And so a number of these people don't have it. So this whole idea about security is a very mainframe mentality. I think in the distributed, and we've gone past the distributed server uh, idea, but even beyond that, so where we are now, it's a total paradigm shift. It is not an evolution, it's a discontinuity. So stop this whole evolution curve like, you know, A, B, C, and then here, instead, forget the past, start new. Jump to H. That's what you're saying. All right. Well, we'll see everyone next time.